another week, boys, and another twab. This week in Destiny, we keep pushing into Nessus's core with Encore. Have you unlocked this week's new canvas? Are you mounting Vex enemies with Choir of One? How much anger do you feel towards the Conductor? And the most relevant question of them all, are you ready for this week's topics? Ready for 9-9? Nine, nine. Ooh, ooh, what is that? That's like the, isn't that the 10 year, the 10 year anniversary coming up? Like very soon. Improve raids and dungeons rotation. Follow the hashtag sword logic. Choir of One ammo reserve change. All right, all right, let's go. Let's go. All right, now cheers to 10 years and beyond. The beyond bar. A special date is around the corner. Next Monday will be September 9th, 2024. The 10th anniversary of Destiny as a franchise. While we could drop a 20,000 word tweet to opine about the last 10 years per community manager, honestly, we're planning to keep our anniversary fun and light. We'll have a small in-game celebration for you all next week, along with some beautiful art the team has made throughout the years. There will be some legendary armor freebies, a fun title. Oh my God, there's going to be a title to earn, some bungee rewards, and more. Check back next Monday at a.m. Pacific for our blog coverage. At the same time next week, we're also planning to start our journey into Destiny 2 codename Frontiers. At 8 a.m. Pacific, we will be releasing a short developer insight blog article discussing our goals for the future of Destiny. Destiny 2 game director Tyson Green and Destiny 2 narrative director Allison Lures will be guiding the conversation. Where have we been? Where are we now? And where do we want to go? Most importantly, how are we going to get there? We want to be clear about our commitment to ongoing communication with you. This marks the beginning of regular updates from our development team about what's next for Destiny 2, including details about its systems and future plans. While the updates may be a bit rough around the edges as they are early in the development process, we're excited about sharing our goals and progress with you. About time, dude. Look, 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 look. I felt like Bungie has been unusually dark about everything. You know, normally they're, they're coming in and, and discussing with us. This is good. Uh, at least at least for us to know okay what what's going on what's going to happen and i'm literally reading it and i feel like in um allison's voice right here this 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 one line where have we been where are we now and where do we want to go most important, importantly how are we going to get there a little late hey man let me let me see these are the same guys and and teams that just gave us a great expansion and so um i'm gonna at least check it out i'm at least gonna see what frontiers is gonna be and what the what the new vision is because you don't have the luke smiths the mark knows and and those i mean this is this is pretty much being you know put into was it tyson greens robbie's allison's like the, this is going to be uh their vision and in the team that's working on destiny right now their vision for what the future of destiny is going to be and i'm curious to see what that is going to be i'm keeping my money this time okay y'all act like we just got a terrible expansion y'all act i mean look, look, look keep your money do whatever you want to do hell quit the game if the game hurts you but y'all act like we just came off of lightfall and like the worst expansion ever we, we 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 just came off of a really good expansion now there are quite a few topics on our communication roadmap to tackle so this would be the start of a conversation our main goal is to provide bind size direct to the point articles over the next few months rather than mega blogs where it's too easy to get mired in the details while we'd love to promise a weekly cadence we're taking the time to cook your meals appropriately our articles are never early nor are they late they'll arrive precisely when they mean to many thanks to all who've joined us over this 10-year journey we said a few times that we're just getting started and it's still very much true the light and darkness saga may have ended but the future of destiny is still unfolding before us the universe is big bright and full of wonder we're looking forward to exploring it and hope to see you join us star side as we approach new frontiers all right let's see it man let's see it so they're gonna be um essentially feeding us these articles i wonder at what point they're probably going to come in and land a a big vidoc on us keep in mind yes this time of the year when we are normally getting some sort of vidoc of the year to come from bungie but that was when we would have releases around february with the release being pushed to july of this year or june of this year i wonder if that is not the cadence loose another thing that's really interesting and and this doesn't get talked about much but at least from some of the um the inside sources that i've talked to Final Shape did sell just as well, if not better than other expansions. The issue was is that it was delayed. That's the biggest issue. And so from a year over year revenue perspective, it is a miss. But from purely an expansion to an expansion perspective, Final Shape did fantastic. And I think that's where like the details get really muddied right there because it's like people saw oh final shape didn't do well no final shape didn't do well from the perspective of sony and bungie because it got delayed by you know three months 
All right, now improving raids and dungeons rotation. Raids and dungeons are an integral part of the Destiny 2 experience. It's where guardians hone their skills and test their metal. It's also where you get some of the best rewards from cool and unique weapons to titles that you can show around the tower. We've heard your feedback about how frustrating it can be to earn some of those rewards when a raid or dungeon is not the one featured in the weekly rotation. And that's the reason why we're making some changes when Episodes Revenant launches on October the 8th. At that time, Warlord's Room will enter the Rotator Queue. So there will be eight raids and eight dungeons in total. So it's fitting then that we double the number of feature rotator activities available every week. This way, the max time that can be passed between a specific raid or dungeon will be four weeks. Let's use an example for better understanding. On the week of October 8th, these will be the activities in the rotator so raids it's gonna be two of them and two dungeons last wish and vow of the disciple dungeons here shattered throne and duality that's huge and look we're just we just have too many options to just have it only one rotate really really sucks so having multiple is good about time so so the, t the topic of removing rotators in in general here's the issue of of removing rotators you do have to i understand why raids and dungeons rotate in because you need players in lfg playing that activity and if you had all of these open away from the rotator and 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 not you see you see where it comes you, you run into a situation where you don't have enough players filling those activities i'm just explaining to you why the road why, why rotators exist guys that's that's all it would be nice if we lived in a world where every one of these activities raids and dungeons had tons of players playing them at all times and looking for a group to jump into those activities was always available for you but it's not especially in, in like times like right now where the player population has diminished so much yeah the pop you, you start you it's too divided. As for the order we will follow, the rotation will still be based on the C2's release order. So after Last Wish and Vow of the Disciple, Garden of Salvation and King's Fall will follow. And after Shadow Throne and Pit Heresy, well, you can fill the gaps yourselves and even build a calendar for the following months. We'll always share reminders on our social media channels. So if you don't already, go join us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and Discord. We hope this new system alleviates some of the pain points around consuming raid and dungeon content and that you can work towards getting those titles more efficiently. And as always, share your feedback with us once the new rotation is available so we can keep improving on it. All right, now hone your swords. Having a good time with what it is essentially infinite sword ammo. Love to see it. And how about your hashtag sword logic su submissions? We are listing the very fashionable winners of the Phyllis Galaxis emblem today. Yeah, we see Said we would select seven winners but it's hard to choose when you all do such great work remember you still have a chance to get some of the photo ionization and movie of the week emblems if you also make us a cool video using swords and we mean swords 1000 voices is not one even though the game thinks it's fun no matter what you say anyway click on the links if you want to check or imitate their ideas all right look it's spicy man looking spicy oh my god is that that's so fun. It's Kill Bill. Yeah. All right. Looking good. Looking good. Now, some of these are spot on. Now, about Choir of One ammo reserves. We know you are loving how strong Choir of One is. Our new special ammo exotic auto rifle is filling. We want you all to keep using it and loving it. But we want to make sure to communicate early that there are currently a couple of bugs that we've identified with the weapon. We wanted to share more context about this issue, and we are lucky enough to have someone from the development team to deliver it directly. So, hello, designer of Choir of One here. So, there are a couple of issues with Choir's inventory situation that have made things complicated. It's a weapon type that is normally pr a primary ammo, but using special ammo this time, ammo amounts and reserves are easy to deal with when the weapon type is already using special ammo. But it's much more difficult when it is an ammo swapped frame. We have to hand set every single value. And all the values that build off those values like how much reserves add to it how much ammo perks granted how much it gets from bricks etc it's a lot easier to get lost in the sauce with these in these and miss something especially when all the systems that feed into it are also in flux at the same time or sometimes even after we have locked the weapon down to ship now choir of one has two inventory bugs we're looking to fix when episodes revenant launches sometimes you can bypass the actual cap of the inventory because of a rare race condition with the perk that's supposed to cap how much ammo you have but with the reserve mod you could spawn with more than the perk caps limit and it doesn't always catch it and remove the bonus ammo it wasn't supposed to get the inventory buff that other special weapons got in 8.0.5 as that increase was already implemented in the weapon by design so on to the actual changes 
We're not looking to make the weapon irrelevant in in-game difficulty. We're adjusting ammo to around 200 base, which will be 300 with reserves. We talked about this the other day. Down from 250 base and about 375 with reserves. So the damage that the weapon puts out is pretty crazy. And the ammo is supposed to be a limiting factor. So if we were to keep the ammo where it is now, the damage would need to come down quite a bit to compensate. We balanced the weapon around the 200 to 250 ammo level, and it felt it was already strong. Then the triple reserves getting you to around 300. That was a treat in that you could use the hip fire mode more freely but 400 ammo or anywhere close it's just a touch too unbalanced for our pv sandbox that was what we noticed like even when we compare the numbers to merciless and fourth horseman the dbs especially like merciless with impetus proc it matched it was fairly close to what you could uh do with choir of one the issue was that the total damage from choir was well over like a million over what you would do sometimes even like a million and a half over what you could do with merciless so yeah the, the ammo economy was really really strong and I would say in the grand scheme of things, this is the, the trade-off I would rather have. I'd rather just lose more ammo, lean into special finishers, lean into scavenger mods and, and ammo finder mods, but don't hurt my damage, right? Like I want the weapon to still be strong. Now as for the extra damage with Divinity on closer inspection, it was discovered that the actual issue is that the point blank variant of the projectile. The impact damage done if the projectile has not split before it hits a target is being affected by an extraneous damage scaler and dealing approximately 250% more damage than it should against combatants only. We will also be fixing that in episode revenue. Something tells me this is not going to be the last time we talk about Choir of One, guys. And I'm not even talking from the nerf side of things i think that whatever this change they're gonna make to it to, to keep it from doing this 250 percent buff with divinity i think it's probably gonna mess something up and and you know we'll have to just see what happens afterwards but i would suspect that and hopefully it doesn't hurt the weapon too much in, in the long run all right name change update last week we resolved an issue with our monitoring and moderation systems that caused numerous bungee name changes on august the 13th as a first step to fix this issue, all players have received an additional name change token to update their names if so desired, regardless of whether they are affected or not by this issue. We are aware that there are still some players that can't use their token and or cannot recover their previous Bungie name. We are investigating this issue and we'll share more information with you when all available when it's all available. Okay, so if you've seen a lot of Guardians running around with the name Guardian, turns out it's not people... I just thought everybody was just being edgy. You know, I was like, okay, that's like your name's Guardian. Your name's Guardian2378. You know what I mean? Like, and even like ZK changed his name to Guardian, but he didn't change his name. That was involuntary. That should be fixed though with the uh, with the token there, guys. Now, Encore Exotic Mission, we are aware of a number of issues that might block progress or cause wipes to certain areas of the new Encore Exotic Mission. We have the following fixes planned for the update 8.5.4, arriving next week, fix an issue on where Encore would not appear as an option in Fireteam Finder. Fix an issue where progression could be blocked in the final boss encounter if the player had repeat either the left or right capture ring. I have never actually ran into this bug. Some of you guys have said you've run into a bug. I don't know way around it you guys know of a way around this fix an issue where depositing connection module too early during a certain section of the mission could trigger a team wipe all right i don't know i don't know i i haven't run into any any problems with it myself but i know a lot of you guys have brought it up uh hopefully this gets fixed soon i'm being told that it's a skill issue just don't die now i'm also being told you just gotta wipe okay so don't die but do die there's some great suggestions here guys I would just say if you're running into issues, wait till next week uh, or just restart. You know, I know that's a pain. That's not a big, that's not a fix, but next week it should be good. All right, Grandmaster Nightfall node. On August 27th, the Grandmaster Nightfall catch-up node was activated to all players. Due to an issue, players who had completed the Grandmaster versions of the six previously featured Nightfalls were unable to properly access it. We have a plan fixed for update 8.0.5.4 next week. All right, get the Conqueror titles. Guys, that is it. As a final note here from Bungie, we are done for this week. We have a ton to share in the coming weeks regarding episode Revenant and more. As always, with the new content drop, the meta will shift. We want you all to get a good understanding of everything. But for now, let's focus on getting those last two crafted weapons from episode Echoes, the catalyst for new exotics, and completing the triumph or challenges you may have left. Back to Encore, everyone. The Destiny 2 community team. Yeah, dude, Revenant, by the way, is looking pretty juicy. But more so than that for me next week, guys, is, is again, this, man. It's this. Whatever that blog post is going to be, we're going to gonna be reading it as soon as it goes live as it goes live again it's it's the first first of hopefully many many talks that Bungie has with us about the future of destiny and i feel like even though in the past we've definitely looked forward to vidox and blog posts to talk about the year to come this one is is there's so much uncertainty surrounding it because you know we don't have that layout that we've had in the past where it's like hey 
here's beyond light here's witch queen life all final shape right and so yeah this is uh this is going to be a very very important blog post it's probably not going to have too terribly much because like they said they're going to continue to drop these over time uh, i do hope eventually though bungie that you guys do put out a vidoc i think a vidoc is really really good i know the cadence is off considering that final shape came out in june this year instead of february but man to end the year i'm thinking like maybe november december come rolling in with a vidoc make it hit show us what's to come give us a sneak peek of whatever frontiers is supposed to be i think in this situation even though yes every one of us likes surprises more more transparency is good and uh, i'm looking forward to that slap that like button like your mama told you right